Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is going to be sharing the one important uh, message that we as older generation need to be able to encourage, need to be able to be bringing teaching. And in what I see in today's society is the lack of teaching, the lack of ability of the older generation to be able to teach those that are younger so that they will know the things that the Lord have already imparted us throughout the experience that we live life without. And when I say without, it's not that we were not um, educated or that we were not taught some things that we travel to in life. It was just that as we learn or as we go in a ways to bring our children to marriage and to be able to have a household, we need to be able to, uh, the, the experience that we acquire it's not for us to end up but the, or to bring it to a grave. It's for us to say the reasons that we did this and we obtained this result, it was because I did this. And if I would have done this, these actions, I would have probably obtained this other result. So the training, the process that we have encountered into our lives, those are ability, those are blessings that the Lord has said, I put you into this world so that you will be able to, that I knew that you were going to be able to walk through it. You were going to be able to succeed through it and you were not going to die while you were going through it. Because some situations that we encounter in our life, some of the situations that as younger years when we encounter is could be out of lack that our parents only told us or gave us information based on the education and the knowledge that they have at that particular moment. Some people have gone through major stress in their childhood, and that brings them into adulthood to be able to not to navigate in such a way that we can say, well, but there was no Bible instruct in my family hall. Yes, that particular individual probably went to a gathering place to learn different stories from here and then here 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 different story that is unfortunate that as we go in our generation in our society we have neglected a lot of the bible base the master the one that created us the one that put it in this world and gave us instructions for us to follow but a lot of those instructions were what all over the place that evil meant in our society had got the audacity to change the history to a detrimental, okay? Not to be able to have the base because if, if from the beginning, things would not have changed. We would have been able to follow and obey the Lord and the things as humanity would not have deviated the way that it has gone. But it just so happened that the enemy of our soul is still in the world, okay? We were, he's here. And he's here not to pervert everything that the master has given. And a lot of people have said, you know, has gotten themselves together with the enemy and say, I'm going to, we will do this. We will create laws. We will create a um, society. We will create churches. We will create gathering. We will create system that will implement societies to go down, 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 down. Never with the expectation to bring us back to the father. No, that was not immense intention according to the history. So, because in the beginning we say, when we repeat, I believe Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's because in the beginning, those people, even those that did not have the written Bible and so many books and so many intelligent ordeals for us to be able to, for them to be able to educate the people, they didn't have a lot of knowledge. Intelligence was not developed. And I would not say intelligent. They were more intelligent than today's day people. But the modern society, with all of the ability, with everything that we have in today's day, that back then they didn't have, but what they have, were able to give them the ability to be the man that we can talk today. I like to be like that man. The faith of that prophet, the faith, the faith of that man of God is what get them the inspirations for the generations to follow them. And that in today's day, we can still talk about those fathers of faith because the children have something to be able to some values that were into them that would over and over and over 
from generations to generations so that they would be able to grow based on those informations or those education or those values that those fathers had from the beginning. Unfortunately, it's not so today. A lot of people have bad memory from their parents because those parents learn from those other parents that have perverted mind that when the child came with questions, what they say, oh, children should not be speaking in front of the adult. Adult reunion has to be here. Kids just good to go and play. So when the kids had some question, they didn't have any other way but to go with the friends and find out from different sources or not from the base sources that they were supposed to. If we, in the very beginning, the way that we were supposed to be taught was by the what the word of God says. Write the word of God when he, when he says the Shema. How does Jesus fit into it, the Shema, and its implications for Christians as well as, well, how does Jesus fit into it? But first, what is the Shema? The Shema is a declaration found in the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, specifically Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. Let's go ahead and read them. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you will love the Lord your God with all your whole mind, from all your whole soul, and from all your whole strength. And these words that I am commanding you today shall be written upon your heart and in your soul, and you will impress them upon your sons and speak of them when you sit in the house, when you walk on the road, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you will fasten them as a sign upon your hand, and it will be a permanent thing between your eyes. And you will write them upon the doorposts of your houses and upon the gates of your towns. That is the Shema. Now, typically, however, it is known just by Deuteronomy 6.4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Or in Hebrew, Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. So that one Bible verse represents the entire Shema? Yeah, it does. Do you all know how to pray the Shema? Yes. Oh, I would love to hear it. You lead us. Hear, Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. Okay, well, why is it called the Shema? Well, that's because the first word in the Shema is the Hebrew word. The first word in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, is the Hebrew word Shema, which is where the entire Shema gets its name, from the word Shema. And the word Shema means to hear or listen or listen with the expectation of obedience, obeying. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh is God, Yahweh is one. The Shema is the supreme affirmation of the unity of God. It's a foundational proclamation of the monotheistic faith passed down from Abraham. By reciting the Shema, one is taking upon themselves the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. That yoke, as defined by the Shema, is of course based in love. We are to love the Lord our God with every capacity that it can be true. And that's pretty neat. This proclamation became so important, it became this core unmovable pillar within faith. Now, for Christians, the Shema may actually sound pretty familiar because we see Jesus reciting it in the New Testament. Remember that incident when one of the teachers of the law came to Yeshua and asked him which of all of the commandments was the most important? Which is the first commandment of all? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. What does the word of God say for the people when, when he says in the Bible, read it in your wall, put it in your forehead, put it in your hands, Put it wherever you have to put it. It's because God says every time, no matter what you are thinking, what's going on, whatever transition you're going through, bring to see or put it into the, the table. See what the word of God says. If we will ask God, what would he wants me to do for this occasion? He will answer us. God is the God that we can see, that we can talk to. That he wants to have a relationship with his children. The devil sent a message. Nobody can see God. If you see God, he, you, you will die. So a lot of people believe him and they say, oh, I have to stay away from God. I have to stay away from this situation. Those are Bible verses taken out of the context of the, what the willing of the Lord. If he did not want to have a relationship with us, why would he create us? He says that he created Adam and Eve to have a relationship with them. And they used to walk around and have a common conversation in a daily basis. But the enemy wanted to always put God on the side and we like we don't have to reach out to him. So what happened, it has created society or individual thinking that whatever they think, the feelings that they have, it can be that the enemy had the chance to pervert 
the natural feelings that God put in us because we stood away from the Lord. If we stay away from the biblical term, from the biblical what the Bible tells us to do, okay, from everything that God wants us to do, we go with our own perspective. And sometimes it's not even our own. It's the enemy bringing thought into us. And then we think, oh, because I have this feeling, then it's me. Then I got to go and act upon the feelings that I get. Okay? Because since we don't have any boundary, if we don't have any, any control of it, everything that is out of, out of control, okay, we can detect that that did not come from God. Because God says in the very beginning, you will have control over everything. So if we have control, we, we will say, okay, this is not of God. Because this is leading me more than what I can take. So when we see that is a very big sign when we see things that is out of our control. So some people can have an addition, okay, and going do going to do things and actions, drinking things, putting things into their body. And then they say, No, I have control. I can just do it or stop that whenever I feel like it. Whenever I want to, I could stop that. If I if this relationship is not good for me, I can stop it. If I cannot drink this, the day that I decide that I don't have to drink anymore, I could I don't have to go. That's a lie. If you continue doing it, you are already out of control. I see ladies, okay, that they go and the red flag of the other individual or the gentleman that is trying to be with them. And then they, they just don't see the red flag from the very beginning that that person does not have anything good for them. So when they go into a relationship, when they give them the, the right ahead, when they say, okay, you can take me here, you can take me there. Before you do things like that, what do you have to do? Check out the red flag on that individual and stop and control your emotions, okay, and see the testimony on that person. The testimony will let you know what that person is all about. Oh, but that person can fake it. Yeah, they can fake it until certain things comes up in them. It doesn't take long before the reality on the individual that is faking something is gonna come out. And especially when you put the boundary, okay, which is God from the very beginning. When you talk about God, if you're gonna be encountering, if you're gonna be meeting somebody and the first subject and the one and only subject, God will be the main subject in that relationship or in that communication or in that meeting, you better believe that the enemy in that person is gonna come out and it's going to go away from you as far as they can. Yes, because then they see there's too much God in this person, I cannot stay together with that individual. But if you put God on the side, or you leave it on your house, you live in a church, you live in somewhere else, you know God will stay there and will go someplace else. Will not go with you because that does not impose himself to be with nobody or no place where he's not wanted. Okay, so what do we do in situations? This is going to be a video that I'm going to be talking about certain things that goes into relationship, okay? Because it is important of the things that is happening in today's day that is all about relationship. Families are being destroyed. Churches are being destroyed. Organizations are being destroyed. People, person, okay? A person can get destroyed in an instant of a moment just by following one situations are going into something that is completely going in the body and they think that oh because I get this feeling I gotta act upon this feeling so because it's natural it's coming up to me and then that person doesn't think that that feeling is not just normal in them it is normal that God put of certain feelings on you but it's abnormal if you act upon the feelings out of control and then your life your business your family your reputation your health and everything is on the line based on the decision that you took at that particular moment. Some people take a day of the February 12th or 14th, I can forget about that, or Valentine's Day. I forgot about it because to me, I had asked the Lord to delete from me all of those pagan holidays that I, that I, I've been blessed by just ignoring them. Not because I don't feel like I wanted to remember some loving situation, but because I know that those pagans, they do not please the Lord. So those days that I used to celebrate them, in today's day, what I say, Lord, forgive me, 
the day that I celebrated that particular um, celebration or that paganism or that things that you say thou shall not have any idol before you and that I celebrated something that is not of you. I ask for forgiveness and sometimes when you ask for forgiveness, God is so good. At least in my case, I forget about it. I don't revolve on things that I do not want it to. I, they just delete out of my system and I go on to the next. And that is healthy because it's the good. When you revolve on situation over and over again and going again and again, there is a spirit in there that wants to distract you, to take you away from the time, the holiness, and the ability that you want to be able to be praying and coming to the Lord with a, a empty with empty mind, without any any backup of cluttered mind, mentality of a lot of things in your mind that you will not be able to be able to be clean to receive a new message, to receive golden things that he wants to give us continuously, okay? Because you are still thinking on past ordeal, on past situation, on past drama that are not conducted to any good things in the sight of the Lord. I'm going to be giving you a sample of Bible verse that people have taken it out of context because then they say, oh, because I met this person or because I, this is my husband or this is my wife or this is my girlfriend or this is, I got married with a person and, and now because some situations and some feelings that people think that they got at a particular moment, some desire that they, oh, but I like to be with um, this lady because we're going to get married and I wanted to be able to have my feeling instead of me going to women's and going to men's or, or perverting myself or not committing adultery or there, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get married with this person in this way. I settle that situation and I no longer be committing adultery, then I'm going to get married with this person. Would that be a reason to get married? Oh, because my days or my times are coming and I need to have children, so i got to get married with upset but the first thing that flies over there that have pants and a hat, I got to get married because I don't want to commit adultery and I want to... Is that a reason to get married? Is it a reason to get married because you are lonely because you have bills and you have children and you have things like that and there's a man over here and he's offering money and he's offering this and this. Is that a reason to be married? Is it a reason to be married because you're homeless and you need a place to stay? Is that a reason to get married? Oh, I need some document. I don't have papers. I need to become legally in the, the country. So I'm gonna get married. So this person would say, is that a reason to get married? When we violate the law of God, we are not covered. The covering is gone with the wind. God is merciful and he will guide you and he will protect you and his mercy is still there, but that's not the perfect will. And when we pray, okay, the Lord's prayer that is saying, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven, that is what that his perfect will for us is what it has to be. So all of the decisions that we make with the wrong person, with the wrong commitment, that is not under the covenant of God and he is not obligated to be and to bless it. He will carry you because he loves you, okay, until you learn better. But that doesn't mean that, that you are not going to be paying consequences, that you are not going to be ashamed, that you're not going to be hurt because those decisions that you made was not the real this uh, covenant within the real covenant that you shouldn't have made it to. The covenant has to be when a person is clear and is clean and is transparent. Love has many sides, but it has only one base. It has only one rule that is founded in him, that will glorify him, that will honor him in everything that you do. When a woman decides that she's going to be marrying a man, that that's going to be her husband, that that's going to be her best friend, that's going to be her partner, that's going to be the person that, that she's going to be, that his family will be her family, that his investment will be her investment, that what his desire is, her desire will be, that she will be looking out for his health. She's going to be looking out for his reputation. And let me tell you, the reputation of a man or of a lady is not only of, in parenthesis, oh, I respect my husband, so I don't sleep with another man. I respect my husband, so I don't use any profanity in him. I respect my husband, so I don't, I don't, I don't hurt him. I don't talk about him to other people. That's not the, the respect that I'm talking about. 
I am going to a higher level. What is honor? Honor the person when your wife says, I am going to be honoring my husband. You honor your husband by being family of his family, by dressing the way that he will honor you in front of his colleague, in front of other people. You will be representing him. That other people will say, oh, the wife of so-and-so is this one. Oh, she's not dressing like his wife. She's dressing like his maid. She, this lady is dressing like a prostitute, doesn't dress like a lady, like a woman that has to be representing a man that he has a title that is supposed to be respected title. So that wife doesn't respect him in her way of being because it's not only because she, she may not speak to him in profanity, but then she goes and be friends with other people and talk ways in style that does not honor the man or the partner that she said that she was going to be faithful to him in everything and if a husband talking to a man that's why when a man is looking for a wife he has to be able to look for a woman that is going to represent him in all the area not just in the bedroom because the bedroom is going to be the minimum time or the lifetime okay so it is it is important that when a couple are looking for a partner are looking for something that is bigger than what they are really because by yourself, that's why when people are single, that's the greatest time of their life. When you're single, you get to know yourself. You get to know what you like. When people break a relationship or they come out of a relationship, that person needs time, needs to be able to get to know themselves, get to know where what they have done in the past that did not work, okay? And what they will do in the present or in the future that will work and will be bringing a different result than what they had in the past. But if you jump into conclusions to say, oh, I need to just uh, suit my flesh. I need to do this fast because if I don't do this, I'm going to fall into temptation of this. No. You got to come down and be able to realize that you were made single. God have a purpose for single people. When you have a single status, that is the time for you to get to know yourself. If you do not know yourself, you cannot expect to be with another person. While you knowing yourself, you have to be able to educate yourself how you would like to dress. Okay, I am going to be dressing like this for the type of person that I am looking to represent for a long time. If a woman, I'm talking to my girls now, to my ladies. If you are dressing, I'm going to show you some things that I have. Hold on a moment. This is a pants. It's embarrassing, but I'm going to show it to you. These are pants. Some people call it pants. They call it leggy and things like that, okay? That some woman, this is, okay, pants. Some women decide this, when they come out, first of all, I remember when they first came out, I used to be working for Yeshiva University, and there were a lot of uh, Jewish lady over there. They used long pants, and under their dress, because the cold and the snow and everything in New York, you have to have something under, underneath of you because what dressing was a, a, a requirement all the time. So we used to wear this, buy this, this leggy to put it on the uh, dress. I see people dressing like these things. What are you doing? You can see the shape. Okay, look at, this is my glasses. I'm gonna put my glasses inside something like this. And you can tell that the glasses are there, okay? You can tell. You can see the shape. The shape, you can see it. So why would a woman wear something like this and think that she's dressed and come out of her house like this and call herself a godly woman? Wearing something like this transparent that you can see that everything inside, you can see it. So what, why would anybody be dressing and showing everything that they have is it necessary to be showing the beauty that you have to anybody? To it? And then you are already a wife of a respectable man, or you are looking for a man that you need to represent him in different areas. So your dress style in everywhere, in every way that you do, everything that you do, how to represent yourself, your dignity, that you are pretty and that you are valuable. Somebody that dressed up cheap, they cheap. Somebody that represents themselves low class, how can you call yourself a respectable lady if you dress like a prostitute? I don't understand that, but if I see a lady 
okay, dressed up like the cheap lady on the, on the corner, then I will say she is. If she's talking, okay, if she's do, using sometimes the phone to be sending each other to friends, videos, pictures, jokes, of things that I'm not of a lady like, you're going to tell me that you are full of all of these things that I'm throwing into this is bringing the personality of an individual that wants some holiness in their life. Because the thing is that when you open those doors, the enemy gets in and then you say, oh, but I don't know. Where did I get that from? My children are talking like that. I don't know where they got that from. Oh, I don't know where that spirit came from. You know, I've been drinking and I, I, I cannot get married. Or I've been with this lady. I'm already 100 years old and I have not been able to get married. I've been already 15 years old and I want to get married. There's a lot of things that you wanted to do. But your actions are putting you behind, are blocking the blessing that the Lord created you to be. So what do we do? We stop opening doors. Okay? We stop getting counsels. When he says, let me, let me read to you what it says over here in the book of Romans. But this is a Bible verse usually taken out of context. And we know all things God works for good for those that love him. Or the, is it a matter of just loving God that is going to be working for your benefit? To be bringing blessing into your life? Just because you love God. Oh, but I love God. But I, 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 no. Just loving God is not going to be enough for you to be able to say. To be having the blessing that he wants to give you. Okay. Who has been called according to his purpose. God has a purpose for people's life. It's not for granted that you become a woman of dignity, a woman with a title, a woman that is respected just because, oh, but I am pretty, pretty, pretty in what shape? Oh, but I'm young. I have to dress like this because, oh, when you decided that you were going to be married of men that is respectable, Okay, or men that has a, a reputation, or men that is, has the dignity to call you a wife. If he is 80 years old and you are 15, let me tell you, at least you be seven, you, you gotta act like a 75. Because you chose him. Okay, you cannot be acting 15 years old with a man that is 80 years old and you be a still, if you wanted to play with a little boy, you should have stick with somebody at 15, not at 80. Because you marry a man at 80 because he has a house, he has money, he has business, he travel, he has the church, he has a reputation for himself, he's the president of the United States. And then you know, if you used to be 15 and wanted to be playing with a 15-year-old boy, you should have married a 15-year-old, not the president of the United States. I heard of a reputation that the wife, first lady for first lady, <laughs> that is a funny name. First lady means to me the first one that he got married, and that's not the first one. So to me, that title of that name really doesn't go. Because sometimes some people have put it in the pulpit. Oh, the wife of the pastor is the first lady. And that means he's betting second, third, fourth, third. Supposed to be the one and only, right? Not the first one. Because sometimes, let me stick to the subject. Okay, let's, let, let me start again, because when I go someplace, I, you, you know me. And we know that all things work, that all things God works for good for those that love him. Who has been called according to his purpose. God has a purpose for us. God has a purpose for our life. And the purpose that he has is for good, the better, and the amen. Okay? It's not for us to just be thinking that we, remember, we are here temporarily in this early round. So if we are here temporarily, we are supposed to be doing the best of the best in all areas of our life. I'm going to be bringing about some of the situations that sometimes we take out of context. And the reasons that we don't follow them is because when we open doors like this that we violate, violations in the word of God will lead us to get further away from the lifehood of the command. So the purpose for ladies, the purpose for being married, the persons to be in a relationship with somebody, okay, to be in a covenant relationship with the person is to make that person better than what that person used to be when they work by themselves or when they work with a, another individual prior to us, okay? I'll go, let, let me get an example. If I am a single lady and I, in, uh, and I meet a man that has already a reputation of himself or no matter what he has, 
of what I'm thinking while I am single. I need to be preparing myself the, when I, when that, when God brings me that man into my life, I am going to be prepared in these areas of my life in such a well way that when he comes into my life, I am going to be blessing him with the things that I have acquired while I was single. Such thing as learn, learn how to be independent, learn how to be a provider, learn how to receive provision, learn how to maintain the provisions that I am giving, okay? Because some ladies, the men will give them an open book for them to go to the, from the bank, but then they go ballistic in ways that the man has to then restrain themselves and that is a hindrance in the relationship because then the man has to start guarding because this lunatic woman goes banana every time that she has money in buying everything that she finds, everything that she sees out there, she wants it, okay? Doesn't have a mentality that there's a future, that there's a sense of security, that there are things that these men wanted to have a partner, wanted to have a wife that will increase what he already has. Time by God to receive. And whatever she receives, she incubates, multiplies it, and gives it back to the male. She was built to do that. So whatever you give a woman, she'll receive it, multiply it, and give it back to you. Whatever you give a woman, are you listening, brothers? She'll never give you back what you gave her. She'll multiply it first. She's designed that way. If you give a woman a sperm, you'll never get a sperm back. She'll multiply it, give you a baby. If you give her a house, she multiply it, give you a home. If you give her groceries, she'll give you a meal. If you give her frustration, she multiply it. Yeah. So, brothers, if you don't like what you are getting, change what you're giving. Not for her to decrease what he has. So the times that you are single, you need to learn, okay, responsibility on every area of your life. Responsibility of how to take care of yourself. How to take care of yourself to the minimum that it will cost. Not him or you or anything like that, that you can do those things for yourself. Some ladies do not know how to take care of themselves. They are high maintenance ladies. Every, if they have to do their nails, they have to pay for it. If they have to do their toes, they have to pay for it. If they have to do their hair, they have to pay for it. If they have to put on a, a little bit of something, they have to pay for it. They have to, if the dress is too big or too low, to, they, for everything they have to pay. They cannot even clean their own house. They cannot even cook their own food. They cannot even be a provide. That's a provision that a woman enchanted it, it brings into the equation of a household. A woman that just like a, like a doll that is, you know, mm -mm. you need to be able to say, okay, I value something. I bring something into this, into this relationship. Because when men are looking for women, they're thinking about all of these things, believe it or not. Okay? They are thinking, oh, there are, there's so many girls that I have seen them. Oh, but I don't cook. There are so many women that don't know how to cook. And I realize that culture has been successful at making that a fashion statement. And it really began, I think, with my generation. Uh, you know, oh, I don't know how to cook. I don't, and it's almost like saying, well, why would I have time to learn to cook? That's, those are housewife tasks, right? I go to work every day. I'm climbing the social. I don't have time to learn how to do these wifely or these womanly things. It's not about, it's not even something that women should have to know how to do. And they say this and you're supposed to understand that they're an empowered woman, right? This is the idea that women should not know how to do tasks in the house. How did we get here? And she looks unbelievably glamorous, and she's talking about the fact that she doesn't cook. Take a listen. You guys gotta teach me something, because I do not know how to cook. How about that? Although, I learned a little dish the other day, a little pasta dish, and I really didn't have much in my fridge at all. And we made pasta, but we made it with, like, this avocado sauce, and it was, like, super easy, minimal ingredients, and it was freaking delicious. So I highly recommend that recipe. Thank you, Google. And it made me feel like I could cook because it was so easy. <laughs> I mean, what could be more glamorous than this? She's wearing a gown, she is dulled to the nines, she has all of this makeup on, and she's saying, I don't know how to cook, you know? It's just, I just don't know how to cook, and thank you, Google, for helping me learn how to make one recipe, and it was actually really easy. And what this does, I am telling you, if this cultural stuff matters, is that it sends a message to the millions of young women that follow her that this is cool. And they're very proud to say, I don't cook. So that poor man has to be marrying restaurant 
eating junk food from outside, from everywhere else, a man that probably came from a household that his mother cooked all the time, that he ate healthy food from his home, clean food from his house. Now he's married the chick that she just wants to be eating in the restaurant outside junk food all the time. How long do you think that that relationship is going to be lasting? That's an open door for people that think that they want to get married at a given moment, but then when those events comes into the marriage, those are opening doors that start bringing struggle, okay, and, and things that are not really helpful. I'm talking to my ladies now because later on I'm going to go to men, okay? So all those things that a lady needs to be bringing into the relationship, she needs to be practicing those things when she's single. When she's married, that's it. Practice it. It's over. It's a time for working, okay? There is no such thing that a man doesn't want to have a warm meal, a hot meal, well done from his own wife. Yeah, every once in a while you could go out, but not all, every day in all the occasion. No, the man should be thinking, oh, at home, I have something. In my home, I have security. In my home, I have all my needs are met. My children's, my family's, my, anything is meet at home. Okay, so when the ladies neglect those actions, or men feel like, Oh, I cannot invite somebody or family member or I cannot prepare this or I cannot do this celebration or I cannot do it because I have a wicked level here of a wife that is only a Barbie for nothing. Okay, so those Barbies ladies need to stop being a Barbie. If you wanted to be a Barbie, you shouldn't have got married because the doll that they marry and play, no, there's no more game. The game is over, it's ashing time. So no more ladies dressing up like Hoochie Mama. Okay, there's going to be dressing like ladies like. Another thing that I have for my ladies, if you open up and you think that with an ugly face of yours, natural things is happy and it's good and it brings people, you are wrong. You are bringing a crowd of people that are surrounding you looking as ugly as you look. When I am doing gardening in my backyard, okay, I am not looking like this. I put on a, a hat, I put on some sun, cover myself, and I go out there sweating with my nail full of dirt, picking up flowers, picking the, uh, every time, that I do not look like this. But if you are gonna go, especially if you are pr using the word of God, you better be looking the best that you can. No, nope, I cannot do my hair because I wanna be natural. I do not do, I don't put on any type of ma nothing makeup because that's evil. I don't put anything on, on any jewelry because that's of the devil. I don't dress nice because that's that's worldly. Life from the pit of hell. Lady, let, this is not for everybody. For those witches, uh, for those people that want to be, let them be. I'm just going to be talking to a particular group of people. Let me tell you one thing. The word of God is giving to people, okay, in all hours. Everybody has a TV in their house. The queen of England has a TV, okay? The president's wife and family, they all have TV. And you don't think that they watch people? You think they're gonna watch you with your hair like that? With your face looking like if you're doing, why? Why do you have to represent yourself like that? You do not have to represent the best that we have in the worst that you look. Before in the world, what you did, it was that you exaggerated, okay, things into the max, that if you were going to be putting lipstick, you put it like, 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 like. if you put eyes, eyelashes you put like eyelashes like this you put your hair in all different colors and you dress in all type of stuff that you look like a prostitute but the apostle paul says very clear do everything in according with balance okay you don't you don't have to be looking so as don't you see how pretty i look you think i look like this when i'm in my garden if i'm in the farm you think that i'm gonna be no but if i'm going to be in the tv if i'm going to be in a in a place or somebody to look, you have to do the best. That doesn't mean that this is the best, but at least to the best of your ability, to the best of your knowledge, you need to represent yourself, okay? And then you wash yourself and you put on normal clothes and this is not something that you do every day. This is not something that you do all the time. But if you are going to be representing the kingdom, you better look like a queen, okay? You look like a princess. You look like the one that God gave you all the ability because you put on jewelry. Don't you think God is a showman? He made his tree not out of any dirt he made it out of gold so if you have some gold if you have things that are of value things that are looking good now that you're going to be putting over here over here over there that's exaggerating that is demonic okay but if you are putting something to enhance 
to do it with holiness because everything has to do with the intention that you have. If you have the intention to represent something that is worth it, something that is good to say, something that is worth it for you to be able to, to for people to see you, for people to be attracted, to listen to the counsel that you have. I hear people that are so wise in the word of God, but in the, the ways of, of representing, I see this person is unbalanced on what they are doing. Because if you are going to go to the court, you got to dress accordingly to the courthouse. If you are going to go to Ogala's place, you're going to have to dress accordingly to the party that you're going to go. If you're going to go and play tennis, you're going to go according with the tennis dress code that is for that. You're going to play baseball. If you're going to go to the to the pool, if you're going to be swimming, they are dressed style for all type of occasion. But some people stick to a pattern, okay, looking as ugly as they could, thinking that just because they tie their hair and they look ugly, they are holy. When I look ugly, I look <laughs> because that is not right. You are not prepared to be like that ladies need to take care of themselves that is part of our nature okay if i see that my son is start putting colors on his hair and, and painting himself and putting the thing and i'm gonna say what's wrong with you do you switch the button no okay if you see your husband putting color putting this man they do the hair they shape they put the little things over here they do the nail they and then they want their wife to be just with her hair like that uh-uh Lady has things to do, men has things to do, and that is part of society. Okay, it is part of us. Unless you want to go to ¿cómo que se llama el sitio ese por allá? that then they cover the head and they put on all you're gonna be showing is this, just this, then you don't need to do nothing. But if you are showing everything else, you better take care of everything else that will, it will look at least presentable for people to see that you have some dignity within you because you cannot just go. I mean, if you want to be natural, then don't use deodorant. Don't use toothpaste. Don't do any soap and just be natural. And natural, you don't put clothes. No, you you you, you be natural. Mm -hmm. Natural, you, 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 don't, you don't cover nothing because this is a dress that I'm putting on. That's not natural. I'm putting something in. So as long as you're putting something, it just so happened that some ignorant people want to be holy in such an idiotic way that they just look ugly and they're representing the word of God in such a way that it go ballistic, out of context. Now I am going to go to purpose that I wanted to really be making these videos for. This is going to be for people that are suffering from a condition that is very ugly and that is very sad, but it is a spirit that we must take out out of our life ASAP. It's a spirit that is destroying society. It's a spirit that destroyed men, destroyed women, destroyed youth, destroyed children, destroyed businessmen, apostles, prophets, no matter what. It's an evil spirit that does not make a difference who he's going to devour. We are going to be bringing some sample, and this sample, I hope that it will free somebody in today's day with this video.